be here, but okay. I will pass on the information. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll start with the President's report. Um, we have a full agenda tonight, by the way, so um, if you do have comments or questions, we'll try to make them somewhat brief, but we have to be out by 9 o'clock. Um, and also, if you can stay from 8 to 9, we'll have a presentation about um, Dr. Joseph Warren, who was a kind of a hero of the Battle of Bunker Hill, and next week, Monday, is Bunker Hill Day, so... Uh, very timely. Other than that, uh, Robin Reed, who's our representative to the uh, Greenway, has gathered the answers to the questions that we had from her for last month, and um, we don't have time this month, but next month we'll spend time and she'll present the answers to us. Uh, I want to remind you there's a U.S. Senate election on the 25th of this month. Um, Ed Markey, the Democrat, and Gabriel Gomez, the Republican. Uh, I'll be voting right here. Um, board 3, Precinct 2, and Dave, what's that, 3 and 1? 3 and 2. 3 and 1 is the commercial three. Oh, and 3 and 4 is the nice economy. Please get out here. Special election is not a lot of people voting. Uh, there's also a meeting uh, of the Boston Harbor Association, and Matt will set some brochures, uh, not brochures, but uh, handouts. An important meeting coming up on Wednesday, June 19th, which is next Wednesday, 6.30 at Battery Walk, uh, flooding prospects, which is uh, important for the future, especially if they live on the waterfront, uh, in terms of what the likelihood are and what they might do. So that's important. Um, I also want to announce that our Clean Streets Award for June is going to the children of the Nazaro Center. Um, on the night before Boston Shines, managed to get to some of the parks and do advanced cleaning. I think the Little League Field, and Prado, and the uh, Pocari Playground. So our clean queen, uh, Janet Gelati, is out uh, getting that together, and uh, hopefully we'll have a picture showing up in the regional, and um, it's not that work on our car. Okay, so um, I think we're ready for some committee reports. Um, Mary? Uh, Thank you, and I think I see some of those new members yes. here. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, parks and open spaces. Um, we meet the first Tuesday of every month here in the Zyro Center at 7 o'clock. And if you care know about our parks and open spaces, we would like to assist in preserving them for future generations. Please join us. Thank you. Thank you. Zoning licensing and construction for today? Uh, yeah, there is a ZLC report at the front desk. I hope all of you picked it up. As usual, there's a lot in there. The, the ZLC reports are never complete because we can't possibly put into them everything that's going on in the neighborhood. Uh, you'll note that attached to this report is a letter that Brewer just sent to the Secretary of Environmental Affairs regarding one of the massive projects that will be constructed over the next 10 years just outside our front door in the Haymarket North Station areas. That whole area next to us is going to be completely transformed in the next 10 years. And the ZLC committee has been paying attention to it. We're trying to notify people in time to attend meetings. And in particular, there's the there's word of a meeting, a public meeting, on the Government Center Garage Redevelopment Project that will be held next Wednesday the 19th, the same night as the 
Boston Harbor Association's meeting about sea level rise. Uh, but there's only word of the meeting, no formal announcement has been made, and I think we're also going to send a bit of a protest to them saying that not enough uh, advance notice has been provided to the community. I mean, it would be like a half a week's notice for a very important meeting. So we're going to ask them to put that meeting off if they can. Uh, but please take a look at the ZLC report. Thank you. Okay, now our first voting item is for uh, Four Winds Restaurant, which wants to add a uh, disc jockey in karaoke. Uh, do you know if they're represented here tonight, Dave? They may not be. If they're not here, then I will take the, uh, the item. Briefly. And I explained a little bit in on the first page of the DLC report in the first paragraph that the attorney for the owners of Four Winds, which is the restaurant on Commercial Street, right across the street from the Sergeant's Wharf parking lot, that large parking lot. The restaurant's been there for many years, and apparently they've had a live entertainment license for many years, and that license has included such things as dancing, games, such as trivia, I assume, and also uh, vocal, of uh, one vocalist, and up to five instruments are allowed there as well. So they already have the live entertainment license. Uh, they did come to us to be on the agenda of the ZLC meeting. They were put on that agenda as well as the meeting tonight. And then they decided not to continue the community process because they learned from City Hall that for entertainment licenses, community process is not required. But we felt, the executive committee felt, that live entertainment licenses in the neighborhood are uh, of high interest and concern to residents and that we would be shirking our responsibilities by not putting it on the agenda tonight. And if we were to ignore this application, it would essentially be uh, effectively sending the impression of no objection. And we certainly didn't want to do that either, but we do want to bring it to the discussion and a possible vote this evening in spite of the owner and the owner's attorney not being here tonight. Again, the license has been in place for many years and has been operated for, for many years. There was no one at the meeting, correct me if I'm wrong, there was no one at the meeting that was in a butter to the establishment. So apparently, there are, we have to assume there are no major concerns. Uh, at the same time, though, uh, while we did advertise that meeting extensively, it is not clear that abutters were notified properly about that meeting. And I say that because we never receive the documentation. We, we always require applicants to submit a copy of the notification that goes to neighbors, as well as the list of addresses. And we did not receive that information uh, at the ZLC meeting. I have not received it ever since. Yes. Yeah, I am in a butter. I'm in okay. 55th Good. Street, so I share the alley with the four winds. Good. And we'll allow you to uh, speak in okay. just a minute. I'm really happy that you're here. Okay. Uh, so, it, the, the license has been there for quite a while. They started to have karaoke and DJ at the establishment, according to them, thinking that it would that it was allowed under the existing line entertainment license, but that it, entertainment license is very specific and does not include, at this time, DJ or karaoke. Those must be specifically added to the license, and that's why, that's the the substance of the application that's before us. The karaoke had been operated there every Thursday night, one night a week, for a while, until they realized that it wasn't covered by their license. Uh, they are seeking karaoke. In the application, it mentions one night a week, Thursday nights. Uh, it mentions the DJ would accompany the karaoke, and the DJ would also be used as part of the functions that they put on in the upstairs function room. The upstairs function room holds about 100 people. The downstairs restaurant and bar has a capacity of 60 people. Um, and I don't think there's much more. I, oh, one more thing. They do have a, a allowed closing time of 2 AM in their alcohol license. And according to the owner, they do operate until 2 a.m. Now that means they can serve up until 2 a.m. and patron, patrons must leave no later than 2 
30, and I, I assume that they're operating that way. Actually, we were told that they are operating that way seven days a week. Victor. Uh, I guess I'd only add that the hearing before the mayor's office of licensing is uh, next Monday, I believe. Yes, Monday, Monday. And what At time? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock in the morning on the 8th floor of City Hall? Okay. 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 The other thing I might add is that um, they say that the, all the doors are and windows are closed as of when the entertainment begins at 10 o'clock. Thank you. That's in the report here. So well. that none of the noise gets outside of the building. Okay. That's the intent. Right. Okay. I will ask for buttons for us if you can um, just raise your hand and I'll call on you and you just give your, your name and the street you live on. Yeah, Bernie Sapienza, 50 Fleet Street. Okay. Um, we, I live in an eight unit condo building that is um, separated by a small alley between here and the Four Winds. Um, because of no smoking allowed indoors, one of the um, one of the noisy elements of that of living next door there is that there's constantly people till two o'clock in the morning congregating outside the bar smoking and they're chatting and talking away and what have you carrying on. So that's something that you do here living next door. Um, yeah, you buy a condo and you already know the bar is there, so you know it, it is what it is. Um, the way it's being presented here it's not being presented as if it's going to get much louder. Sounds like they were already kind of doing some karaoke. It sounds like they were already kind of doing this jockeying. All they're doing is going to get the license to do it appropriately. Is what it sounds like here. Under that, obviously, it wouldn't be such it wouldn't be such a big deal. Yeah, is yeah, is this an addition? Right? Is this a, this does this app license add additional amount of nights per week that they could operate? No, uh, it is adding the types of live entertainment. Two types: karaoke one night a week, and apparently that's been Thursday nights. And also DJ. The DJ would be there on Thursday nights with the for company to the karaoke, and the DJ would be there, according to the owner, a couple times a month for um, functions. Yes. Yeah, and the function is upstairs, so that gets a little bit louder if you live next door because there's a lot less separating from the bottom floor from the top floor from, from the noise table. But if the windows and doors are supposed to be closed during this, they don't this to happen. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what to expect from, from a noise level. I mean, at the moment, uh, you know, you, you buy a condo next to a bar, you live next to the bar, and that's, I guess, it is what it is. But if it gets louder, I would, I would like to know that in advance and try to see if I could oppose it getting louder or later. And they're not, proposing, later, yeah, they're not proposing any later. Uh, okay, so 11 is when the music stops. No, no, it starts at 10. They're going to the 2, I think. I don't know how late the karaoke will It says go. here that the establishment serves until 2 a.m., but live entertainment no later than 11 p.m. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, That's what it says here, what you wrote. No, I said that the, uh, no, what I said was that the windows must be closed during live entertainment. Uh, or by 11 p.m. So, the, so whether or not during live entertainment the windows and doors must be closed, whether or not there's live entertainment, the windows must be closed at 11 p.m. Oh. And if that's what's in the current entertainment license, and okay. I assume that that's not going to change. I see. Uh, uh, I have the license in front of me. It says all windows and doors must be closed when live entertainment begins or no later than 11 p.m. unless otherwise restricted. But it doesn't address the end of it. It's simply it's a two-way license. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, again, this is being presented to some degree. It's being presented to us. We were doing it mostly anyway. We're just going to go, go get the official license to do it. That's basically what I'm hearing. And in that, in that case, then it won't change. It shouldn't change all that much from what it is now. Is that, am I reading that right? Or I that? think that's right. Yes, that, okay. that's the way that they were operating for at least several months I, uh, without the license. And then, yeah. of course, they terminated it and they realized it wasn't legal. I have a question for the others, though. You mentioned the noise outside the establishment. Have you approached the owners about the noise outside? No, just, I've always just assumed there was this normal course of, you know, okay. of life. You live next to a bar, people go out and smoke and they talk while they're out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I know them to be responsive business owners. Okay. Uh, and I think that you should approach them and talk with them and maybe there's something that they could do. Okay. Of course, we have a lot of uh, complaints about noise outside establishments, especially establishments that serve alcohol after midnight. 
Yeah. And it seems to be an issue that is not easily resolved even by the, the owners. Right. And now with the smoking ban, people go outside to smoke. Sometimes they hang out there. It almost becomes an extension of the bar yeah. for smokers. Yeah. Sorry. And in a four foot wide or six foot wide alleyway, it becomes an echo. So it echoes pretty good. And that's usually where it takes place. But Yeah, well, okay. maybe they shouldn't be allowed in the alleyway. Yeah. That's one way to mitigate the yeah. noise that's here. That might help. Any other abutters? Well, another question for the abutter. Um, have they been a good neighbor in terms of closing windows at, uh, at 11 o'clock? Do you know? Uh, I don't. I, I can't answer that question one way or another. I, I know that they are a pretty good neighbor in that, you know, I've been in the bar a few times myself and stuff, and they seem like reasonably nice folks. But I don't I don't know if anybody in my building that has gone to them to say, hey, can you cut it out or anything like that. I, just, I, I was concerned because when I saw this, uh, when I got this public notice that, that this was taking place, I was concerned if it became louder. I would be concerned if it became later, you know, you know, that's really kind of what I'm concerned. I mean, you know, like I said, I bought a condo next to a, a bar, it is what it is, and that's okay. But if it gets worse, and if I can have some hand in hoping that that doesn't, doesn't happen, then that's what I'm interested in finding out about. Well, it can't come later, but <coughs> if they had not already been operating karaoke with DJ, I would say that certainly there's a potential for it becoming louder. But because they were operating that, and again, I don't live in that area, I don't uh, go to that establishment, so I don't really know what the level of noise is there and how it was affected when they added karaoke and DJ st uh, several months or more ago. Okay, uh, any other questions about this uh, presentation? I have, I have just a question. I, I was aware that they had karaoke for a while. The, the DJ thing has me a little concerned because I, I sort of think of them as two different, different things. Karaoke is sort of a nice thing to do with your friends and all that. DJ is a nightclub. And my question is, if they get this license, knowing that they're nice people, I'm not as part, but you know, licenses transfer, as we'll talk about uh, in another case. But uh, what would be to prevent them from just saying, we got the license, we're a nightclub that closes at 2 a.m. now, from now on, and that's, that's what we're going to do. Well, if they didn't serve food, they probably would be on the club, but, um, Well, they have two floors. Food floor and nightclub. And yeah. I don't think they serve food after a certain the kitchen time floor. of night. It closes fairly early. Just but yeah, that's a good, that's a good <coughs> point. No, right, but the on second the floor could, could conceptually, irrespective of what happens with food, the second floor could become a club. Right. You know, dance club, as and opposed to what it is, is now. already allowed in the license, in the current the license. The license. Well, I think the bottom floor, isn't it? I, uh, is this it function hall only? The, uh, I don't think it says in the license. No, it doesn't. But if, if they can't have DJ or karaoke, I mean, if you're dancing, what, with like a, a string quartet? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, it seems like they have some elements. But if you like, you know, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. This is the last piece. Snap it in. If you wanted to, maybe you could turn it into a nightclub. Well, they're talking about one night a week with this. Well, the karaoke, it's clear that that will be one night a week, and that's right in the application. The DJ, uh, you have the application, right, as well? Yes. And, and it's not clear to me that there's any restriction on use of the DJ, or even a proposal on the use of the DJ. And they mentioned to us that it would be associated with karaoke on Thursday nights, and it would also be uh, to support the functions a couple of times a month, always on Saturday nights. Yeah, and they one suggestion. Maybe you could ask them, as you always ask nicely, to put that into the application if they want the support of the group. And we can also attach it to our vote tonight, <coughs> not suggesting what that vote will be, how it will come out, but uh, we can always put conditions on to our votes. Okay, uh, any other comments uh, for all con of, of this proposal? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not much. Um, this has nothing to do with the uh, alcohol portion. But there is heavy, heavy smoke <coughs> out on the sidewalk. So could we put that as one of the conditions? Because I understand that there's some type of city law you can't smoke 25 feet uh, within 25 feet of an establishment where there's food. Mm -hmm. And would that pertain to this? 
Did that pass? I know that that was proposed. I didn't think it passed. Or I, I, don't, I didn't think it, it went to the point of being uh, <coughs> promulgated. I, I, yeah, I think the Restaurant Association went to Zurich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 didn't think it I, I don't believe it has been passed yet. I've never seen that. But you may be right. I, I, I certainly see, if it did pass, I see violations of it everywhere all the time. But they too might say, well, we stop serving food and then we do the music. So that might get around it. I don't know. Okay, so anyone else uh, on this? Okay, uh, so uh, would someone like to make a motion uh, to vote for this? I'd like to say one other thing. We have a number of options tonight, a few options tonight. We can vote to support or oppose. We can vote to support with conditions. We can also, we can also decide to ignore, we can vote to ignore the issue, uh, essentially sending a, a, a signal with no objection. Uh, so there's a number of things we can do tonight. Just to mention that before anybody makes a motion. Okay, uh, would someone like to make a motion to vote on? I make a motion to support the conditions. And those conditions? Okay. Okay. Conditions on the DJ? And Perhaps what, what you said, that they said verbally. With uh, karaoke functions a couple of times a month and with karaoke. That is the D the DJ may perform at functions a couple of times twice a month. Otherwise only with karaoke. Is that what the condition would be? Well I was trying to character I was trying to encapsulate what this <coughs> verbally represented. But yeah, you heard the representation. Though. Yeah, I would. Uh, I guess I'd split up the, the, the floors and say that on the first floor, DJ should be only to accompany karaoke one night a week, and then on the second floor, it'd be used to support functions. Uh, and it was explained to us that those functions would occur twice a month, only on Saturday nights. Yeah, that makes sense. I think. I mean, again, what you're trying to do is prevent it from becoming a nightclub. You know, that's what you're trying to do. So uh, whatever way you have to word that to, to get there, I guess that's the condition. And I know that they don't use, I, I believe they don't use that function very often, do they? Uh, no, it's function, yeah, whenever they book a function only, right? But how often do you think yeah, that it's happens? Not, it's not, not that often. often. Yeah. Okay. And it's actually, it's a great function room, too. It's a wonderful function. And they function. do a great job. So even though I'm being a stickler on what they said and what they wrote, I think they're great, but, you know. They could sell it, and then you could have, you know, you could have a nightclub as the next owner, so that's what I want to avoid. So the motion is to vote to support with the condition or oppose the, the application for amending the live entertainment license to add karaoke. So the conditions are what now? And the conditions are that the DJ, use of the DJ on the first floor will be limited to uh, Supporting the karaoke one night a week, and DJ use on the second floor will be limited to support of functions that will that the owner has stated will occur a couple of times a month on Saturday nights only. Okay. So we have a motion um, to vote for it on those conditions. Would someone like to second? Jason. Okay. We will um, use the ballot number one, which is blue, and circle whether you support or oppose. 17 support and 13 oppose. So we'll write a recommendation letter with the conditions. 17 for 13 again. Uh, we've since been joined by uh, Kathy Grantolo of the uh, City Council of Lamartina's office. Do you have anything, uh, Kathy? Uh, just at the lights on Salem Street, are going to stop next? No, they're going to stop putting the lights on Salem Street. It's going to go from Cross to Prince and then Prince to the end of the street. Um, hopefully sometime next week, and the pavement is supposed to end by July 1st. 
weather permitting on Taylor Street. So everything is done by July 1st? Weather permitting. Weather permitting. I want to call one. Sorry. I don't, the way I was told was that they'll, they'll happen in phases and the lights will take a little bit of time. We're having a meeting on Tuesday internally to figure out what's going to happen. So I, I I haven't heard that it's all lights and pavement will be done by July 1st. Okay. Well, maybe they're not going to Yeah, maybe Kathy will. Well, sound just about <laughs> I walked in here. I don't know. So it could be, but I heard the lights are going to take a little while, so that could. So are there no lights on Salem Street? No, there are. What they'll do is they'll take off the block of lights, and then they'll replace them, and then they'll move up to the next block, and then to the next block, and then to the next block. Okay, the next item is uh, Strega Pizzeria, which is next door to Strega. And they would like to have their beer and wine license moved from uh, Mixed Alley to Strega Cafe. <coughs> sure. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know if you heard the last one. Good evening, my name is Bill Ferrolo. I represent uh, Nick Verano, who was the applicant for this application. Uh, Nick is the operator of uh, currently two, what used to be three restaurants here in the North End, Strega on uh, Hanover Street, a little further down in the firehouse is Nico. And up until uh, May 1st, he had uh, Nick's famous deli, which is at 66 Cross Street at the end of Hanover Street. Uh, he did not renew his lease after five years of that location, and there was a beer wine and cordial license uh, as part of that business that he is applying to transfer to this address at 373 Hanover Street, uh, which had been a clothing store up until a year and a half, two years ago. Nick uh, took a lease on that space, uh, had the zoning changed to allow it to be uh, a restaurant including takeout uh, for use as a uh, cafe pizzeria. Uh, the space uh, accommodates 19 individuals. Uh, it's rather small. Uh, the prior space on Cross Street accommodated uh, 30 uh, individuals and 15 on an outdoor patio. Uh, the service at the uh, cafe pizzeria will be morning uh, breakfast service starting at 7, meeting coffee and baked goods uh, associated with early service. Uh, at lunchtime, we will start uh, a light service, pizza, salad, uh, sandwiches, things of that sort. Uh, in addition to the coffee, the coffee will stay all day from uh, when it opens until when it closes. And uh, he will also, in the evening, have uh, desserts added to uh, the menu of the light foods as well as the coffee. Uh, part of it is that, uh, as you heard, Nick operates Strega Restaurant directly next door to this, uh, which is also a fairly small restaurant, and he's hoping uh, this is system in two ways. One is that uh, dessert service can be taken here as opposed to in the restaurant, uh, freeing up tables in this restaurant. Uh, and also, if people are waiting to enter, they can also uh, come into this establishment and have something light and uh, something to drink at the same time. We agreed that there'd be no service of alcohol without food, so this is not going to be some place to go in just to have a drink. You will have to have something uh, to eat and not have to be able to bring the Nick's been uh, operating here in the North End for more than 10 years. Uh, businesses are all well received. Uh, they have no knowledge of any violations that he's had on his businesses in the month end. You're probably also familiar with the fact that he operates <coughs> a rather large restaurant on the South Boston Waterfront called uh, Strega Waterfront uh, as well. And he's also in the process of opening a steakhouse uh, in Woolver. So he's a busy man. Uh, this is uh, just one of his uh, endeavors I think they're all uh, well respected and well run. So the application, again, is to move an existing not then license that he has from one location on Cross to the second location now in the industry. What would be the hours of the alcohol service? The alcohol service is proposed to be, uh, can, cannot be earlier than 11 in the morning. That's the regulation of the ABCC. And it will uh, be until 11 o'clock Sunday through Thursday, and then Friday and Saturday until midnight. Okay. 
And is the space currently undergoing renovation? It has been, uh, call it demo, it's been cleaned out. Uh, it, has, it is not built out. Okay. Okay, so are there any abutters to 373 again on the street? Yeah. Okay, now, any questions about this presentation? Uh, would anybody like to speak for or against? Good. Well, we'll go right to um, a motion to vote for. Yes. Make a motion to support. Uh, we need a motion just to vote. Support. Okay, second. Thank you. Okay, we'll use the pink uh, ballot to search for either support or vote. Uh, the vote is 18 in support and 12 votes. So we'll write a letter to support the transfer of the um, would uh, <coughs> like to possibly move their feast from the Lower Hanover Street to the Crossroads. Go ahead. Good evening, folks. Joe Monterano, Chair of the Board of St. Joseph's Feast. Uh, at this time, due to uh, a lot of the negativity we received last Monday regarding our attempt to upgrade and move the festival to the Prano, we intend to withdraw. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.